here, I'm going to show you how to make quick data templates. It's an interesting little thing that works like this. Let's figure out how many rows we want. How about five? Let's figure out how many columns we want. How about four? Let's figure out the minimum value, maybe five bucks. How about the maximum? Maybe 100. What if we want to change the prefix to red? How about we change this prefix to green? And we have very quickly and easily made ourselves a nice little data template that we can then copy and paste wherever we want. And this is what I'm going to show you how to make here. Now make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and click the like button. The more of you that do that, the more videos I can make. Then download the file so you can follow along. A link to it will be in the description of this video. And now let's start with a fresh worksheet, and I'll show you how to make this guy. All right, here we go. And the first thing to do is to make a mock-up of what we'd like the final result to be, or kind of like. So for instance, I know that it has to have a prefix, and then it has to have a number for my rows. So I'm going to go ahead and input that there, and let's make a few sample rows. And now we do the same thing for the top. Let's say period one and copy it over. And the reason that you want to build this first and we're going to do it by hand is because if you don't do this, you may not know exactly what you need up here. So now I know that I need numbers. And just put some numbers in. It does not matter what we have for now. And if you want something down here, you should go ahead and put that in there. That would make this a lot more complex, though, I have to say. And the same for if you wanted to put something over here. But it could be done, and it might be a fun exercise for those of you who really love working with formulas. But it would be a little bit too much for this specific tutorial. So let's focus on what I showed you in the intro. This is our basic setup. But now, once you have it set up like this, begin to think, what do you need for each thing? So for here, I know that these are going to be numbers. I need a minimum value and a maximum value, and I want them randomly generated every single time, because this is going to be a kind of a data template or a sample data setup. So here I know I need a min, and I need a max, and I need a way to generate the number. Now, how about for this? Well, I know that I want a prefix. I know that I want something to go at the beginning, and then I know that I want a number, and I want the number to increment by one each time. For the top, I want the same thing, a prefix and a number. I want to be able to control how many columns there are and how many rows there are. So now that I know all that, I know I need a rows, a columns, and two for the prefix. Now that just assumes that I'd like to be able to change the prefix. If you wanted to hard code the prefixes, then you would not need these guys here. You could also put something at the end of the numbers. It's totally up to you, or maybe you don't even need numbers. But we do need a dynamic way to generate rows and columns. Now let's go ahead and figure out what we want to put here. I'm going to zoom in just a bit. What we can use is the wonderful new sequence function. So if I use sequence 5, and let's delete everything below it, it's going to give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's perfect. I've got my number, and I've got a way to make a dynamic number of rows, because I can change 5 to 3. And now we only have 3 rows. And this is so nice. You're going to love this. How do we put a prefix on the front of it? Just type it in, ASC dash, close the quote, and an ampersand to concatenate them. Hit enter, and sequence takes care of filling them down for you. For period, we are going to do almost the exact same thing. So equals, and start off with sequence. You want to make sure you get that right first. This time for rows, we only want one row, because we're going to be going across left to right. And columns, how many columns do we want? Let's go with five to begin with, and we get that. So all we need now is to add our prefix, period. And let's put a space on there, and then the ampersand, and there we go. 
change 5 to 3. And now we have three columns. Now, how about these numbers? This one is going to be slightly more complex, but with another lovely new function. Equals rand array. And here we say, how many rows do we want? How many columns do we want? How about the minimum number, the maximum number? And do we want integer or not? So let's go for two rows, three columns, minimum, how about five, maximum 100. And do we want decimals or not? Nope. So let's go for integer, true. Hit enter. And there we go. You want to change how many rows or columns? Just go up to this first guy. Let's make it a three for that one. And how about six for that one? And there we go. The new formulas for Excel are really so nice. And that's the trick, really. Sequence and a rand array. Now, all we have to do is link these guys up with these cells up here. Let's put in some sample data first. How about two and three ASC, period. Let's go for 100 this time and 1,000 this time. And now let us begin to link everything up. Let's leave in the dash here. Go to the front, click the prefix, space, ampersand, space. Now we have whatever we type in cell D3, a dash and sequence. And go for period, and we shall leave in a space. Go to here, and ampersand, and there we go. Now let us link up for the number of rows. We will replace three with number of rows, and replace three here with number of columns. For rand array, we have a lot to replace. Rows here, then columns here, then min here, maximum here. And there we go. And let us make this a drop down menu. So click here and go to a data, a data validation or Alt DL, and we have a list. How many rows do we want? Well, let's allow for 10. And copy it, okay. Then go here, Alt DL, a list. And how many columns do we want? These do not have to be the same, so we could put more here and it would be just fine. And you could also make data validation lists for these. So maybe you have predefined a prefix. You want ASC, you want ASF, whatever you want, and the same for this one. That way the user doesn't have to figure out what they should have for the template. They've got nice menus to control everything. So now we go five. That is so nice. And let's go 10 all the way there. Perfect. And the last step is to copy all of this. So just select everything, hit Control C, and let's go right down here and then just do Alt E S V Enter or Paste Special Values. And now these numbers are frozen. They're hard-coded values. So you can use them however you want. And that's how you can copy and paste this guy into another workbook to go ahead and use it. So that's why it's great for a data template or to create sample data or whatever you want. Use this to create it, then copy paste special values wherever you need it, and you're good to go. You have a nice little template that you made in just a few seconds.